Hello dear viewer and welcome back on my channel. Uh, last time we made a first video talking about the Nerveland project and uh, the fact that I wanted to introduce support for entity an entity component system uh, in that um, library. So what we did was to simply start implementing um, a scene class and a scene manager class and that's about all what I did in about half an hour of uh, video of recording. Um, not that efficient, but yeah, let's not consider that. Anyway, um, next thing now, I wanted to send this video as the first one on my uh, channel, which I call the Lone Engineer. The Lone Engineer, yeah, because I'm an engineer and I'm alone, so. That makes me a lone engineer, right? Yeah, probably should find a better name. At some point, we'll see. Anyway, um, but before sending this video, I thought it would be good to have some kind of um, background music, at least at the start of, of the of the recording. Uh, very low volume, so you can still hear me speaking. And at the same time, I must must also say that yeah i don't speak loudly enough i think so we'll try to work on this <coughs> and uh, so what i did concerning this was to implement a small script in python uh, using my other framework my scripting framework uh, which i call the nerve proj framework which is in fact publicly available on github i should probably also add a link for this one in this video in the description under this video um, and so i've been using the movie by package so let's get to this and have a look at what we have let me bring the no not the recording window of course yeah so the visual studio window here we are um let's not talk about any detail here all we need to know is that we have this uh, python file which is describing a component this component is called movie handler and in there we can and all a few actions. One of those actions is the uh, compose action here. And when we call this, we will basically get to the execution of this function, the compose video function. And this is where I currently have uh, this implementation that I started to mention, where I use MoviePy. So, video file clip here is from uh, the movie by package audio fi file clip also composite audio clip and uh, so i take my initial video file and additional music and then i grab the audio from the video file and i compose this main audio with the background audio here with a small volume for this one and I multiply the volume by two actually for the voice because uh, yeah as I said I was speaking very uh, quietly and then uh, we simply rewrite another video file with this um, composited um, audio clip so whoa wait a second why do I uh, am I really doing that? No, I was not doing that, right? I hope so. I was probably not executed at the end. So the best state I think I reached was this one where I write the video file specifying which codec I want to use and press that. I set that to slower, which is really slow on my computer, but never mind. And this is working, in fact. So this is producing this kind of output here uh it will first write um mp3 file so i think this one is just taking both 
audio stream and mixing them together and only after that it's going to take this mp3 and mix that with your video file to produce a final output so as i said this is working and uh, as you can see in there so i have this uh, folder where i have the source um, the source file which has used which was this one the rush one and it produced a final um, file here which is in fact way smarter which is good problem is uh, this is taking a lot of time because MoviePy, when you request it to write a video file like that it's going to re-encode uh, the video stream that you had in your clip which in fact makes sense in almost every case because uh, when you're processing video clips like that you probably want to um, I don't know add an image add a text perform some transformation on the video stream itself so in the end you have to re-encode that Except that in this very specific case, uh, I think I don't really need to do this re-encoded, uh, re-encoding, and we could instead just copy the video stream. So this is what I want to try now, and I think if we use FFmpeg directly, we can avoid the re-encoding part, and we can simply copy the video stream and manipulate the audio stream which should be way faster so let's try that what should we be doing first first let's just comment that uh, and um, let's just run this along to confirm that uh, we get to this point so just rerunning a compose video here. Yes, compose video is the name I give uh, to the script, which is here, compose video, which is going to execute this handler and with the compose action. No need to go into more detail for this part. And so running that. We get a simple should compose blah 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 into blah blah blah. Done writing file. Good. So this is executed and now we want to perform an FFmpeg action here. Uh, let me find again because I had some reference about that and to find that and then we'll type it. Okay, so the base reference I have Concerning this is this one. Okay, yeah, a bit too long. So let's put that on multiple lines. Mm. So you'll take a video, an audio file, and a filter complex, which is uh, specified on multiple lines. I mean, on multiple um, elements here. So let's put that uh, let's cut that into pieces here and then continuing here and I think that's the only filter there really is here and in the end we have that which is the key part so for the video codec so codec video we use copy which means just copying the video stream and then the output will be mp3 here except that i'm not going to use the mp3 mp4 sorry uh it's going to be mkv probably most of the time never mind <coughs> so first of all i need to retrieve the ffmpeg executable that i have in my environment here that will be ffmpeg um, equal no idea anymore I know it's written somewhere but probably in there in fact no not the actual 
I should have a FFmpeg get or something like that. Well, or maybe I should just go directly into the tools module where I know I have this uh, get tool path. That should be it. Get tool path and then the tool name. So uh, back in my function here, I need to get access to tools first. So tools self, I think you can just do get component and this is called cool tools and then you could do ffmpeg dear equal tools get why are you not helping me oh yeah because you don't know it's a tool component it's just a generic component here so we can to tell him uh what is that tool manager so this is going to be a tools manager. Nope, and none. <coughs> so from MVP, mm, I think it's component. Nope, it's not. It's maybe in core tools, import tools manager. Is this working? It should. So now I should get the help. Get tool path. Okay. Get tool path for FFM peg. Okay, this is another complex part. Um, <coughs> again, not trying to explain everything very clearly for the moment, but we just have a configuration file, a generic. Uh, YAML file here and in there we should have an FFmpeg and uh, so this is a tool of uh, the name of a tool for my uh, for me so Windows tool in this case and with that I am normally able to find that if I search in the location where this tool will be deployed uh, and I go into the bin folder there will be a FFmpeg point so I will retrieve this executable file as a tool path here. Let's just mention that to check we're not doing anything wrong. Mpeg here, okay, and if I were to Run this again. So FFM battle tool toolpath is do 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 do. Yep, it's most definitely there. Next, we need to build the command line that will be used for the execution of FFmpeg here. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm going to try to find this because I'm sure I'm using that somewhere else. No, not here. In uh, video converter, yes, makes sense. So we have a basic command bit like that. Oh, there's a little filter complex here. Good, let's take that. Control C, and back here. Let's just call that CMD. So we'll use the ffmpeg executable. It's not really the gear. What I am I calling that gear? It's rather path. Okay, number of threads. Yeah, we can specify that. And then the input. We have input the video file first. So I and it will be the V file and another input will be the audio file I audio file okay and then we'll care we can 
write this filter. So let's just copy the complete filter. Oh, maybe not. Let's just copy filter complex. So filter complex. We are removing that. And before creating the actual command, let's prepare a string uh, containing the filter data. So filter, just filter, no string, filter string, equal, and this should be what we have here. Except that we don't want or we start with that maybe yep. and we add to it filter string plus equal and the last one okay now we also want to change the volume eventually it would be good to make this uh, configurable from the um, from the function uh, arguments itself but for now let's just use the default value we used before so for the background audio so wait 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 here the first element is from the stream zero the audio stream zero so that's really the main audio so this one we want to multiply by two so volume should be two here and uh, then from the file number one we get the audio so that will be the secondary file here this one we want to multiply by zero one except that i actually want to make the background audio even lower so let's reduce that further to zero 0.0 let's say 5 we'll see then we mix both and duration equal first I suspect this means that the complete duration of the audio stream will be the duration of the first audio stream which is good because that's a main voice channel and uh, the background audio itself is going to be shorter anyway it's a small song so it's going to be mixed with the voice at the beginning and then there will be no background sound anymore so yeah we'll try this way and we'll see if it's okay and then uh, we can finalize uh, the construction of um, of the command let's put that on another line actually so cmd plus equal And here we need the quotation marks. Um, let's try it like that. And uh, formatting the string with the filter string. Okay. And the last part now is uh, for the. Um, video copy thing and uh, we have at the end the output file okay uh, for the output file I use something a bit special here this is common so we can just put that at the beginning I think We just add this destination file, okay? Um, now we should have the ffmpeg command ready for execution. Let's just see how we do execute that. We can display the command and then run it with execute. So oh. 
first batch, just try to display it once. Twenty minutes already. Oh my. So executing command ffmpeg. Uh, okay, thread. Blah 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 blah. The video file, the audio file, the filter. This will be concatenated, so the first quotation mark should be removed, but the second one will be uh, kept. So ending here, then copying the video. Y is for replacing the file if it already exists, I believe. Not quite sure, but probably that. And then the output file. Okay, uh, let's maybe keep a copy of uh, the previous version we had, um, D0. And now it's time to execute this. So let's enable this part. And uh, this was, um, oh yeah, that's in case we have an error. Um, video composition filled in. Mm -hmm. And we return, there's no need to return a value for this function. Oh, we could just return that in fact, so return. And in case of failure, let's just return false. And otherwise, true, good. Execution time. Boom. Ah, yeah. Things like that happen sometimes. Let me see. Okay, seems that the quotation marks that I added, yeah, then maybe should not be be added here so let's start to remove that and see if it's working better uh, where is that here okay and okay waiting bingo so writing in progress normally it's just basically doing the audio encoding so that should be a lot faster than if we have to process the video at the same time we'll see how long this takes cool so yeah it's working just fine so you see here it's the process is completed uh, completed at uh, 5.32 and 4 seconds and uh, it was actually started at 31 and 18 seconds, so 40 seconds. Compared to the previous version, which took me half an hour. That's definitely good. I checked the file, so it's this one. It's about the same size as the original file, a bit smaller. Uh, quality is okay, and the sound is uh, just as expected. We have the background music, so yep, that's working just fine for me. So I'll keep this uh, version for now. Uh, later, if I need to modify the video stream itself, of course, we won't be able to use the same code, but that's another issue for another day. For this time, I think it's okay. This video is already too long, so sorry about that. And uh, see you next time, hopefully. Bye-bye.